In today's episode, you will learn how to make an industrial level product which can be used to control anything on time basis. This project is based on 80 mega 3 to 8 microcontroller, the same microcontroller which is used in Arduino. To reduce the price, I designed my own PCB board and sent my PCB board Gerber files to PCBWay company which is one of the top leading companies throughout the world. In part 1, I explained the whole process how to generate the Gerber files and how to place an online order. The link is given in the description. This product is very user friendly. All you need is just to connect the load which you want to control. In my case, I'll be using a 220 volt indicator lamp for the demonstration purposes. If you want, you can connect any type of load. For higher loads, you will need to connect a heavy duty relay at the output of this relay. So this relay will be used to control a heavy duty relay and the heavy duty relay will be used to control any type of high load. For example, heaters, grinders, water pumps and so on. Once the load is connected, then power up the circuit using a 12 volt adapter or battery. Adjust the LCD contrast using this variable resistor. Turn on the start button. Set the time using this variable resistor. For the demonstration purposes, I will set it at 1 minute. This indicator lamp will remain on for exactly one minute. The same process can be repeated again by pressing the reset button. So again this indicator lamp will remain on for one minute. The load on time can be adjusted in real time using this variable resistor. In this episode, I will cover number one, complete circuit diagram explanation. Number two, PCB explanation. Number three, soldering. Number four, programming. And finally, number five, testing. Let's get started. The components used in this project are number one, 80 mega 3 to 8 microcontroller and its base socket. Number two, 16 megahertz crystal. Number three, 22 picofarad capacitors. Number four, 10 kilo ohm resistors. We will need two of these. Number five, terminal blocks. Number six, a push button and a toggle switch. Number seven, 7805 voltage regulator number 8 10 microfarad capacitor number 9 330 ohm resistor number 10 2.5 volt led number 11 12 volt spdt type relay number 12 1 in 4007 diode number 13 2 n 2222 npn transistor Number 14, 16 into 2 LCD. Number 15, female headers. And finally, number 16, 2 10 kilo ohm variable resistors. These components can be purchased from Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. This is the complete circuit diagram. This is a toggle switch and is used to start and stop the timer. One side of the toggle switch is connected with the ground while the other side is connected with pin number 2 of the Arduino. This is a push button and is used to reset the timer. One side of the push button is connected with the ground while the other side is connected with pin number 3 of the Arduino. The variable resistor R2 is used to set the time in minutes. As you can see it has three legs. 
The right and left legs are connected with 5 volts and ground, while the middle leg is connected with analog pin A1 of the Arduino. This is a 16 into 2 LCD and will be used to display the preset time, elapse time and load status. Pin number 1, 5 and 16 are connected with the ground. Pin number 2 and 15 are connected with 5 volts. Pin number 3 is connected with the metal pin of the variable resistor. This variable resistor will be used for the LCD contrast adjustment. The RS pin of the LCD is connected with pin number 6. The enable pin of the LCD is connected with pin number 7 of the Arduino. Pins D4 to D7 which are the data pins are connected with pin 8 to 11 of the Arduino. This is a 12 volt SPDT type relay. This relay has 5 pins. These are the two coil pins. This is the common pin. This is the normally open pin and this is the normally closed pin. These three pins have no physical connection with the relay coil pins. This relay cannot be directly controlled using the controller. To energize the relay coil you need around 28 milliamps. This is not a fixed value, this depends on the size of the relay you are using. You can easily calculate this value, first find the relay coil resistance using a digital multimeter. As it's a 12 volt relay, so V is equal to 12 volts. Now using the Ohm's law we can find the value of the current needed to energize the relay coil. The type of the relay I'm going to use needs 28 milliamps. So now I can use any general purpose NPN or PNP type transistor. So far its collector current is greater than 28 milliamps. But it's a good designing practice to use slightly a larger value transistor. In my case I will be using 2N2222 NPN transistor as it's really cheap and you can find this transistor in any electronics shop. The collector of the 2N2222 NPN transistor is connected with the relay coil while the other side of the relay coil is connected with 12 volts. The emitter of the transistor is connected with the ground. A 10K resistor is connected with the base while the other side of the resistor is connected with pin number 13 of the Arduino. The transistor and resistor together makes the relay driver circuit. This is a freewheeling diode and is used against the big EMF protection. So that's all about the connections and now let's discuss the PCB designing. This PCB is designed in Gatesoft Eagle a 9.1.0 version. If you want to learn how to make schematic and PCB then watch my tutorial. The link is given in the description. This is a double side PCB. The blue color represents the bottom side while the red color is the top side. All these connections are as per the circuit diagram is explained. Watch part 1 for the Gerber files generation and online order placement. The link is given in the description. You can download this PCB design from the PCBWay company official website. These are the PCB boards which I just received from the PCBWay company. As you can see the quality is really great and everything is as per the order. During the online order placement I selected the blue color. But later I decided to change it to black color. This change was only possible due to the friendly behavior of the PCBWay company staff members. I'm 100% satisfied with their work. First of all, I installed all the components. As you can see, maximum components are installed and now it's time to start the soldering.
As you can see, maximum components are soldered and now only female headers and two variable resistors are balanced. So I will bake after soldering the remaining components. As you can see, all the components are soldered. These are the two variable resistors. This variable resistor will be used for the LCD contrast while this variable resistor will be used for setting the time. This is for the LCD. Over here, we can connect a 12 volt adopter or battery. After the soldering is completed, then I check the short circuit. So double check all the connections and make sure there is no short circuit before you power up the circuit. At the end, connect two buttons with pin number 2 and pin number 3. Now, let's discuss the programming. Hash include liquidcrystal.h. This is a library which is specially created for the 16 into 2 LCD. The same library can also be used with 16 into 4 LCD and some other types. Hash means that this is a preprocessor directive and dot h means that this is a header file. I have a very detailed uh, getting started tutorial on how to use a 16 into 2 LCD. I will provide a link in the description. These are the LCD pins which I already explained in the circuit diagram. Then I defined some variables of the type unsigned long for storing the milliseconds and seconds. Then I defined some variables of the type integer or the variables or will commented. Still, if you have any questions, let me know in a comment. As you know, my friends, every Arduino and Mega program has at least two functions, which are the wide setup and wide loop function. Wide means that this function is not turning any value, while the empty parentheses means that this function is not taking any arguments as the input. Serial dot begin 9600 activates the serial communication while 9600 is the baud rate. This is used for the debugging purposes. Once the programming is completed and you are satisfied with the results, then you can simply comment this instruction. Set up the LCD's number of columns and rows. Clear the LCD using the lcd.clear function. Print a message on the LCD. Preset time, time, elapsed and load status. Pin mode is a function and it takes two arguments as the input. The pin number or pin name and the status which can be input or output. Set buttons as input and loads as output. Timer raw data is equal to analog read time data. Reads the variable resistor which is connected with analog pin A1 and store the value and variable timer raw data. Then using the MAPE function we limit the value from 0 to 60. So 60 is the maximum time in minutes that we can currently set. If you want you can change this number. These two conditions are used to turn on and turn off the load. To avoid the unnecessary repetition of code the S flag variable is used. So each time the load is turned on or turned off, the display status is changed. This condition means that if the push button is pressed, then simply reset the seconds, minutes and C stop. This condition means that if the switch is turned on, simply count the seconds, print a message on the LCD, select the second row and print the preset time in minutes. Then select columns to print the elapsed time in seconds and minutes. Then read the load status using the digital read function and display L or H accordingly. This condition is used for counting the minutes. Then these conditions are used to compare the preset time with the current time and the load is turned on or turned off accordingly, depending on the result of the comparison. I have already uploaded this program into the 80 mega 3 to 8 microcontroller using Arduino board. Let's watch this project in action.
Turn on the circuit using a 12 volt adapter or battery. This is the preset time, this is the time elapsed and this is the load status. First of all press the reset button. Then turn on the start button. As you can see the indicator lamp is turned on. As you can see currently the preset time is 9 seconds. This is the elapsed time and the load status is high. So this indicator lamp will actually turn off after 9 seconds. Using this variable resistor I can change the preset time. Let me set it at 1 second for the demonstration purposes. As you can see the lamp is turned off and the timer is stopped. Now if I press the reset button the timer will start again and the lamp will remain on for 1 second. But this time let me change the preset time to 3 seconds. Now the lamp will remain on for 3 seconds. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you like today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.